good. Like this. It's running. <laughs> I know. <laughs> You're watching Brian's Mobile One. Um, enjoy the video. Hi, I'm Brian, and I'm going to go a little bit green on you all for just a minute. Um, there's a couple of sayings that I was thinking of as I was preparing to do this video. And the one saying is, better, cheaper, faster. Uh, a lot of businesses are always striving for that. And business gets on the hook for being non-environmental. Um, and then another saying that I was thinking of in preparation for the same video is uh, reduce, reuse, recycle. So these two aren't always that different. Um, when I'm working on cars, there's oftentimes things that it's a faster, it's cheaper, better, faster if I do certain things and behaviors, I'm going to talk about that in a minute, than if I'm just trying to uh, just spend money and just replace everything like crazy. So let's talk about it. I'm going to talk about uh, using a burnishing file. Uh, in the comment section, uh, these two fellows were kind enough to turn me on to these uh, burnishing files. By using these, you can get the relay that you have in hand work better, cheaper, faster than having to wait and pay money for a new one. And at the same time, you can reduce, reuse, and recycle. Out of necessity, thrift, and speed, I've taken to soldering computers and uh, instrument clusters, just different automotive parts because it's cheaper, better, faster and it just produces a good result. You don't have to waste a whole bunch of money in postage and wasted time for these things. And uh, the, the coolest thing is, is I started doing this and then I learned a lot from you guys. This is kind of the same thing. But I didn't know all about, you know, solder suckers and wicks and amniotic tinning blocks and things like that. I didn't know what any of that was, but you guys taught me in the comments and so I jumped on it and I've been doing that. Uh, same kind of thing, I did a video last week about uh, Spanky's car and it was about a relay and the contacts on it are bad. So this is a relay, the contacts aren't that bad, but look how tiny a gap that is. So what you have is you have these teeny little files that are called a burnishing file and they are just absolutely tiny. So what these do is you get in there and you can clean it up by pushing the contact down and just sliding it in and out like that. And you see how that gets in there and there's plenty of room to spare but it cleans up the contact. Contacts get burned up because there's something wrong with the circuit where there's resistance. The resistance creates heat and then you get a bunch of carbon build up or just over time you get some kind of a, a white chalky kind of a substance just like you find under an ignition cap is in cap and rotor wire set kind of stuff. So I've got these little burnishing files that I went ahead and bought by the recommendation of these two good fellows. Thanks again for that. Uh, and I love when you guys come up with these things because I'm not the best at everything. I'm pretty good at most everything. I don't mean to brag but I put my hours in if you know what I mean. Uh, but when you guys really help me learn these things, I want to share it with everybody else, with the rest of the class, if you will, because we're all learning here. So this is a control unit, uh, and it's also a window switch for a Lexus. And the replacement for this is incredibly expensive. It was like eight, nine hundred dollars just for this. And this is on my mom's car. So we got one at a wrecking yard. That's another way to reduce, reuse, recycle. Don't feel bad about me ripping apart a Ford relay because uh, I got it from the junkyard. Speaking of reduce, reuse, and recycle. So I've got all of these relays. I just go through and just pick a bunch of them from the pick and pull. This is actually out of a Nissan, but it's a little fusible link thing. Um, you get all these fancy relays, it'd be a little tricky to fix. But sometimes you don't have the one that you need, even though you've prepared ahead of time. You know, you still run into problems, so that's why it's nice to have this. I paid $12 for these, and that's with super fast shipping and everything on Amazon like I like to do. For $12, you couldn't buy a relay for most things. Most relays nowadays are $20. And now, like I say with this, I wanted to tear into this, but the stupid uh, bit thing's not going to allow for that. But I got into here and I found that there's a relay that soldered onto the green board that I couldn't get into. Uh, let's see if we can get in there and look at it. So when you get into this window switch, and like I say, we already got another one from the wrecking yard. My dad ordered it in uh, from carpart.com. You're going to learn all kinds of cool stuff. This is going to be a short video. It's going to be all over the place. But there'll be a lot of good tips. So carpart.com is an inventory for auto repair houses that can, uh, you get, basically you get on there, you put in your year, make, and model and all the options. 
and from there you get quotes on getting uh, used auto parts for all kinds of engines, transmissions, uh, crash components, you name it, all kinds of stuff. Uh, they're not great for you know some of your little things, but for a lot of your big things, uh, a wrecking yard that has an inventory that's worth its salt, you can search and find what you need. So here's a circuit board, and what I found is I look at all these little resistors on here, and they're all great, nothing's shifted. You know, everything's uh, sealed down pretty good, but you can see where there's been a little bit of tacky stuff around here. Um, these aren't blown, the tops aren't blown out, but you've got these relays on there, and I think that's what the problem is. So, and these are really sealed down on there. Um, but what you do is you shine a light, look from underneath, see what the, uh, where all the contacts for it are. I think it's just these four, but I could be wrong. Might have a couple here, yep. So what you do is you get all these off and pull it out, look inside and see if you need to do this. What I think happened here is this. I went in and I, I tested it and I found that the motor was good. I found that the switch was getting signal. I hooked up my scan tool and I could command the window to go down and it would go down. And when I'd command it to go up, it would stop going down. And as soon as the command ended or I let off the switch, it'd go down. And basically it was sensing too much resistance against the motor. And instead of going up, it thought that there was a safety hazard, that there was fingers or something in there. And so it'd come up to a certain point, hardly at all, and it would shut these off. So I think it might be a relay issue. It could be something else. It could be something sensory. I am not an electronics wizard, but I am getting a lot better at soldering. And now I've got myself some burnishing files, and the world is my oyster, basically. No, but I'm, I'm still learning, but I would like to look into that. I tried to pry this up a little bit, and it just wasn't, it was nothing doing. Now, most relays, while we're on the topic of burnishing files, most relays you can pop off the cover uh, by just getting the sides. Like this one, I just mutilated it because I wanted it to open easily on camera. But you've got four little clips here, 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 and here. Uh, that basically lock onto the thing. You can see the little recessment here, 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 and here that they go into. So what you can do is you can take a screwdriver, a little flathead or whatever, and you can just pop these off, pull them back, and it'll work. Um, most of the time you don't have to crack the housing. I mean, if you do, there's things that you can do to reseal this up. Okay, I'll tell you what you can do. On my body kit, I've got black glue gun stuff. I can put that on there. That works pretty good. Another good thing is uh, the Plasti Dip. You can put Plasti Dip spray on it. You can get the Plasti Dip and just brush it on, and that'll give you a nice weatherproof thing. They lock on pretty good, but basically that's how you get in. Um, say, for example, you look at this one. This one, you can see it has a clip on this side that you unbuckle. Can you see that? And then there's another one on the other side like that. So if you were to push up on it, see this would have been a better one for me to do on camera. Tell you what, you put a camera on something that you're working on and it, you just get all self-conscious. So here is another one. Man, look how dark the solder blob is. So you can tell the electromagnets here. Now getting to that contact inside of here would be difficult in most cases. Now I still haven't showed you my needle files, but you can see Right down in there, you can see the contacts and you have access. You could get your burnishing file in there. Man, these things are awesome. All right, so if you have a rough file or if you have sandpaper like I had, that can contaminate it. And just like you have carbon or just like you have that white stuff that's found in the air. Oh, I did it backwards, didn't I? So I did the short one in the long groove and I did the long one in the short groove. Son of a gun. So we'll fix that later. So I've got all kinds of files. I've got files for sharpening chain, chainsaws. I've got hasp files for woodworking. And this is a set of needle files, uh, which works great for most things, but they're just way too thick. When I compare a burnishing file with a needle file, you can tell that there is a significant difference in thickness. You know, there's different styles, but let's just see if we can find the thinnest, flattest, one that we have. And these will, and there's uh, point files. See, this one's pretty thin, but it's got nothing on the burnishing file for just being really thin. 
Just awesome. So I'm going to leave some links in the description for these files. Of course I like Amazon links because they're mutually beneficial. It's a kind of a win-win thing. Um, and I just like Amazon anyway. But you can get them just about anywhere. You can go on Google, uh, you can go on eBay, you can go on Amazon. You can find these just about anywhere. I would recommend getting some uh, because like I say, if you're in a pinch and you don't have a match, Bam, clean it up and you can get a match. So let's talk a while about why it's better to file than what I did with sandpaper out of desperation on that uh, circuit opening relay on Spanky's Corolla. When you use something that's coarse like sandpaper, um, you have a bunch of fine little points. If I had a strong magnifying glass, I'd show you the difference uh, between something that was filed versus something that was sanded. The sandpaper has exactly what it says, sand. There's different grits. This is about an 80 grit, and then this is somewhere around 220 or so. This is wet or dry. It looks a lot different than this does, but basically there's sand in them, and this is what I was using the other day. When you look at it up close, you can see the tiny grains. The grains break off and get in there, and that can be a problem in those points because, as anybody knows, when you have a lot of heat, which causes a relay to fail, that heat can cause the sand to possibly turn into glass or anything else that cooks in there and gets in the way. How do I know that? I know that because um, if you have uh, this type of weapon that's made to use in the desert, you have a little cap on it that just keeps the dirt and the stuff out of there. If sand gets into the weapon, you can have glassing uh, that will cause it to not operate properly. We'll just say, pull the flag out of this one. So these are two different ones and they all have the same thing. They have that little dust cap to keep the sand out. A weapon that's jammed full of glass is difficult to clean for one, but it's also worthless. It won't run very well. I use sandpaper, like I say, because that's all I had on hand that would fit in there. It's very thin. Uh, but if you can use something that's steel, and also very thin, that's very advantageous over using something that can leave contaminants that could co possibly cause glass, which is an insulator between the points. That'd be bad. Thanks for watching. I really appreciate you guys tuning in. I appreciate the thumbs up, the comments. It really helps me to learn a lot and hopefully it helps other people learn as well. Um, Man, what a great thing this YouTube channel has been for me. It started off as just kind of a Boy Scout service project kind of a thing, and it's turned out to really be something that's helped me in tremendous ways, and I just want to say thank you guys for your support. Love you.